Well, good evening, everybody. It's about seven o'clock. We're going to be starting this in just a moment. I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. And uh, I know we all have other places we could be. Really? Well, maybe not. <laughs> other other rooms. We have other webinars. And other, yeah. You know. <clears throat> Hmm. Good questions already. Yeah, I love it. All right, we're up to 46. Um, so I am uh, Travis Keyes. I'm the chairman of APA New York. Um, and uh, when all this started kind of hitting, I had this, uh, this, this feeling like, wow, how am I going to, like, I can't have these live interactions anymore and I want to reach to people and I want to be supportive and I, I want to help the community. So suddenly I'm like, all right, I got to get online. And uh, I knew that we were canceling a bunch of live stuff and uh, I, I wanted to be out there. And it's not just that uh, we are here to inform or educate. We're here to support and really kind of talk to each other. And uh, as I was saying to uh, our, our wonderful panelists tonight, uh, it's it's not that that we have all the right answers. We're, we're, we're looking for the right questions. And sometimes just the right questions can lead us to, to right answers. And it's so important that we support each other and help guide each other. And uh, it's, it's, you know, I, last night I had, uh, I was joining a, a friend's uh, webinar and suddenly I saw my phone ring and my, it was my mother. And she usually doesn't just call out of the blue. And so I answered and I could tell she was panicked in her voice. And, and all of us have that moment where no matter how strong we are, we kind of just panic, like it becomes overwhelming. So know you're not alone and we're here to support you. And that's why I brought a couple of great panelists on tonight. And our, our first panelist is, uh, is Tony Gale, who uh, I first met uh, going to Cuba. Um, and I think he is probably the best first guest to have on tonight, because as long as I've known Tony, he has... Um, He's inflappable in terms of he is the Zen-like uh, person that is always calm. And I, you know, if it's if just a, if it's a Wizard of Oz thing, and to please do not pull the curtain because I, I, it's I am always impressed at how how calm and uh, and well-spoken he is. And so our first, I'd like to welcome our first uh, panelist. Uh, well, Tony Yale. Tony. Hi there. How you doing? Hi everybody. Well, you know, I, I've been better, but it, it could be far worse. So, Tony, not only are you a Sony artisan and uh, uh, a Manfrotto ambassador, but you are the president of APA National. So that is how, true. How did that come about and uh, how did you first really kind of get involved with APA? I first joined APA when I moved to New York in 2000 uh, because a lot of what they did seemed like things that really mattered to me as a, an assistant at the time and as, and as, as an aspiring photographer. Um, we're seeing your desktop now, Travis. Um, and we're not hearing your audio at all. I'm just uh, showing you a quick slide while you're talking. Oh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I moved to New York. I joined the APA. Uh, I joined the APA New York board, I think in around 2006 or 2008. Uh, as the web guy, then I became the chapter rep, then it became the chair of uh, APA New York, and then I became the national president when Teresa Raffetto decided uh, five years was enough, which is <laughs> certainly true. Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah. And our second guest uh, is, is Joe, all the way from LA. You're, you're uh, an LA native, are you not? Um, I'm a California native. Oh, but, California. Uh, okay. Yeah. California. Uh, why mm -hmm. don't you tell us a little about yourself? Um, yeah, I'm a, a photographer in LA that kind of <clears throat> um, built my career on editorial. Um, I came from newspapers, but uh, my real freelance career is um, uh, has a real editorial background in the last couple of years. I've transitioned a lot of that work into um, entertainment work and advertising. So I'm sort of like in three worlds now. I'm still doing editorial, um, which you know everyone knows that landscape has changed, and getting into advertising through you know agency work, and then also entertainment advertising, which is a, a lot of the work that goes on out here in LA. So right. 
Um, so, you know, I'm watching it from, from different angles at all times. Sometimes one sector picks up while another um, flails a little bit, but um, uh, there's a lot of perspective to be had when you're, when you're, um, you're dipping into different sectors of the, of the photography. I, I'm mostly doing portraiture, so that's the, the world I'm, I'm living in. So in this last, uh, for both of you, this last uh, transition of the last two weeks, what changes to you have occurred? How, how has this affected uh, uh, you and your business personally? I mean, I think I'm, you know, I'm talking to a lot of my photographer friends and people who I've never even talked to before. I mean, that's one of the silver linings is everyone wants to really dig into the community right now, which is why we're all here and why I thank you for, for putting this together. I think um, the reaction has been that uh, we want to talk it out. Um, I feel like my experience is no different than everyone else, which, you know, we're lucky enough to have a lot of holds on the calendar. Um, you know, jobs wrap and then you just start thinking about what your next job is and that's how this, this game works. And uh, you could have a slow couple of weeks, but you know, after those couple of weeks or, you know, even a dry spell would be two or three weeks, uh, you know, more work is always around the corner. This is the first time I think we've all felt that uh, we don't know when uh, when the jobs that are were on the calendar have uh, have canceled or they say postponed. We don't know, and nobody knows if those jobs will come back. Uh, specifically, I think jobs will come back, but um, I think we're all in the same boat of uh, uncertainty. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly it, it says that surreal feeling. Of, you know, we're we're all kind of living this movie, but. Uh, uh, we're all in it together. And uh, I think that's the one thing that really kind of is going to, there's, you know, it's, it's scary and we all have our personal issues and our personal uh, worries in this, but uh, there's a lot of good that comes out of certain things like this. And I've never seen like communities pulled together, like, and there's just all these upsprings and offsprings of people wanting to collaborate and, and, you know, work together and find ways to help each other and support each other. Tony, you wear several hats in this, you know, being a, a national uh, uh, president and uh, dealing with an organization with a lot of members, plus your own personal um, uh, business and, you know, um, being uh, an ambassador for many other uh, companies. How has this affected you and how, how are you playing all those different roles? Uh, well, the obvious thing, similar to Joe, is a lot of stuff postponed, some stuff canceled. There's a couple things on the calendar, but the likelihood right now of those happening seems low, uh, at least in the near term. Yeah. So, you know, I, that's the case for all of us, I'm sure. Uh, unless you're a photojournalist working as a staff for a newspaper, in which case you're probably hopping. For the rest of us, it's slow. And so that, you know, that's unfortunate, but what I'm trying to do is think about uh, what I can do so that when things pick up, I'm ready to go and can hit the ground running. Like normally when it's slow, I might spend time marketing. And right now that feels like not the best thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I've gotten so many marketing emails and it just feels a little tone deaf at the moment. Yeah, I mean, see, when certainly every single second you're getting that, uh, we we had so and so our COVID, you know, COVID nineteen, yeah. you know, the blanket is yeah, it's getting a little too much, and uh, it, it's you don't want to be part of that, but you know, it, it is. I think uh, it brings us to a really kind of good segue here. Is uh, what do we do now that we have all this time, and and what are the 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 things that keep us balanced and uh, centered and reduce our stress levels and our mental stability and, you know, our mental health, because these are all things that are really going to affect, you know, when you have to spend a lot of time in one space and not have the, that freedom. Uh, I think it's very important to keep a routine going. What are some of the things that you're finding yourself on a day to day, -day level trying to do and change your life or keep a, a, a normal standard life to in this time? Uh, well, one thing, just to touch base on what you just said before this too. One of the things I'm doing is trying to think about what even in a limited capacity I can do to help my clients because it's not just us. Everybody is stressed out right now. Everybody's anxious. Everybody's nervous. And so if there's something I can do, obviously to help the photography community, but if there's something I can do to help my clients, whether or not it in any way benefits me directly, I value them. I hope that they value me. And so if there's something I can do to help them, or it, I think there's value to that. And so that's part of, to get to the routine, I'm still getting up in the morning. I rent an office in the city and I brought a whole bunch of hard drives and stuff home. 
so that I can still get up in the morning and do some retouching and come up with ideas and plans and reach out to people. Uh, Joe had mentioned earlier, I'm trying to reach out to at least one person every day, especially people that I know might be by themselves. Yeah. I think, I think to, to, to kind of jump off on that as well with re the outreach, one thing that I've found helpful is reaching out to the people that support us. So our crew, um, our vendors, people who are small businesses themselves. Um, one thing I wanted to do was communicate with my crew that, you know, you will be paid. <laughs> this is, this is not um, going to slow us down. In fact, I'd rather just speed that part of it up. Um, I, I'm trying to just get all of the vendor payments out um, because, you know, this, these are all microcosms. You know, we rely on our corporate clients um, to pay us, but we have an entire economy of our own as photographers. And that's, that goes for every photographer who doesn't do it alone, um, including wedding and lifestyle and every other type of um, uh, small business sort of needs to have that communication. So I would, I would encourage people to reach out to all of your crew, anybody, you know, even if you don't owe the money to just say, you know, I'm thinking of you, we're going to, you know, come back to some kind of normal at some point and you will be involved in that. Um, I think the, anything that stems that uncertainty, just hearing from people who employ you. I mean, we're, you know, as freelancers, we um, think that we have sort of like these soft guarantees with clients who really like working with us, but there is no contract with, with anybody that we work with. And we don't have contracts with our crew. We can right. decide to not use them at any time. And that's very stressful to, yeah. uh, to everybody. So I think having those conversations of like, look, I'm thinking of you when this comes back around, um, you'll be in the crew. <laughs> and, um, and also those, those payments that, you know, you've already built for, they're going to be taken care of, you know? Yeah. I know certain certain things that I find myself doing, and, and it's funny because now that I've kind of found myself at home, like, oh, I have all the time to do things I, I wasn't doing. I'm actually finding new things to do and uh, keeping extremely busy. Uh, I'm trying to keep a certain amount of offer out office hours and also decompressing hours. So I want to, you know, have a certain time during the day that I disengage from social media and the news and just turn that off because that's, that's going to, uh, you know, really kind of that, that stress, you know, is, is something that's just going to eat at you. So to have a time where you can just walk away from it, get outside, if you can, you know, take a walk or, you know, do something that's exercise or mindful, you know, meditation or whatever yoga, it's very important to keep your mind and body kind of active in this, especially if you're, you know, kind of sheltered and stuff like that. Um, and stay socially engaged. I mean, it's so important to know that you're not alone and to reach out to friends. We all are going to get down in this. We're all going to have, you know, down periods and, and get stressed and panicked. And it's really important to have that circle of people to really Really kind of say, hey, I'm having a get bad day or a good day, or let's get together and, you know, on virtual and, and do something and together. What are you guys kind of uh, doing in the, those regards? I'm trying to go outside every day, running, going for a run, going for a walk. Um, I'm as much as possible trying to keep that nine to five ish schedule. Uh, but I'm not watching any news, I'm only reading news. Right. Because watching news is it's it just feels too uh, uh, it just makes me too anxious to watch the news mm -hmm. when I can read it. I can think about it. It's I can make sure that the source is reputable. They're not sometimes television news is I feel like is trying to fill time in a way that print media isn't. I'm calling it print media, even though it's digital now, for yeah. the most part. Um, yeah, I would say that um, sort of compartmentalizing, compartmentalizing your day into making sure you don't fall down these rabbit holes that we would fall down anyway. I mean, you know, social media is is a great way to feel connected, but you should also pay attention to how it actually makes you feel. I mean, it could actually make you feel really bad. Yeah. Um, like there's a lot of boosterism on so, uh, on social media that um, that really might invalidate your real feelings of. of of worry right now and you're allowed to kind of feel it all and, and be worried about it and, and give yourself that um, that time to, to do that and then work through everything because that turns into uh, productivity and then productivity turns into an idea of 
of hopefulness. And, you know, you just have to kind of go through it all. But I think if you're stuck with being fed a lot of information, I mean, the way we get news today, like Tony says, is it's, it's nonstop and it yeah. really does trigger a lot of uh, feelings. And, you know, and people are saying, you know, make sure you talk to your friends. Um, I, I also just personally feel like make sure you're talking to friends when you feel like talking because there's a lot of cost there emotionally of, of sort of like maybe you might have to, you know, really be there for someone who has, um, has, has is having a harder time uh, than you. And you might have, you know, finally felt like oh, I've I'm, I'm got some footing to do some actionable things now. Um, and it might take you down a little bit to, uh, to just, um, just randomly talk to people on a whim. You might want to schedule um, some of the conversations that you have with people so you can kind of mentally prepare for it and say, I'm going to be a rock for that person who needs me. Um, but if it's just rapid fire hitting you at all times, people just kind of calling and texting while you're trying to sort out your day, um, I think the idea of a schedule is really good. I mean, it, it, as freelancers, we make our schedule. And this is, this is probably one of the most important times of our lives to really um, to feel in control. I feel like most anxiety comes from a lack of control and uh, whatever we can control um, uh, in our days, is, is going to lead to, uh, to, to feeling a little bit better each day. Yeah. And there, obviously there's certain things that are totally out of our control right now. And the, in the, and that whole feeling of, not being able to have answers right now is why a lot of people are panicking. And I know uh, I'm going to bring up, uh, we had a, a viewer email uh, that wanted to ask a question and the, sort of the elephant in the room that everybody's kind of grasping for answers for, which I, I'm not sure they were definitive answers, but I'll read the question. I've had a lot of cancellations. I'm uh, totaling losses over uh, $800 just this week. So I'm panicking. Honestly, what challenges, what changes can I make to save myself? And I know this is a huge question and everybody's kind of really, really worried about money. And, and uh, some people have, uh, you know, put away for a rainy day and some people are living week to week. And so this is, you know, this is really kind of a, a question that is dependent on your financial situation. And um, it's, uh, you really, this is the time to really take a close look at your finances. Um, you have to really kind of break down that credit card and see what the reoccurring uh, billing is, when, you know, mm -hmm. whether you cut out HBO and, and, and make a plan for 15, 30, 60 days. You know, you look at the, the long term in terms of if I have to cut the most, this is what I have to do and reassess that every, you know, a couple of weeks, you know, even 10 days, seven days, you know, whatever makes you feel comfortable that uh, you can get out there and really kind of, you know, have a plan on this. Um, you can contact credit card companies and sign up for a payment plan. You can use credit cards wisely. You can proactively uh, uh, contact creditors and stuff like that. I know certainly in New York, they're deferring mortgage payments in that, you know, all kinds of stuff right now. There's all kinds of links that I'm going to put up in terms of uh, applying for artists, um, you know, grants and, 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 and funding and stuff like that. And uh, so what do you guys um, kind of suggest in answering that kind of question? What do I do now? And how do you kind of alleviate or can, can you answer even answer some of those questions of people's finances and fear? I mean, it's, it's so hard to say. And I think probably most of us have been in that position at one time or another. Um, I agree. One of the things is if there's a bill you're not going to make, you, you, you're going to have to prioritize. You know, rent for me would be number one. Um, but you're going to have to prioritize, and I can't tell you what that priority is. None no. of us can. But calling whoever it is, whatever bill is going to be late, call them ahead of time. I, I can't speak for any company, but I would expect that most – most places are going to understand that this is a complicated time and it's better for them to work with you than to make it hard for you. Yeah. And I think the, the main thing that we kind of have to understand is like, yes, this is very difficult, but this is not just like, you know, a, a small group of people going through this. This is the entire nation and entire world that is going through these problems. And uh, it's uh, people are going to have to work with this because it's, it's you're not just going to, you know, cancel everybody's credit card and it's just not going to happen. So there's going to be, you know, a lot of give and take here, I think, and people working with people on yeah, this. Yeah, I, I think in, so, in some ways this is a true uh, moment. Uh, in, in all of our careers and certainly our lives of uh, strength in numbers. Nobody is not affected by this. So I think it will, will we will collectively um, as an industry, um, but also as, as, a, as a culture, um, come up with new ideas that we didn't think we ever needed. And so I think you should take 
some solace in the collective energy of everybody sort of needing these solutions. Um, yeah. And uh, and you can come together, in, you know, in your in your closest knit community, and then work outward from there. And I think you'll find a lot of answers. I, I just got an amazing email from Matthew Young here in LA, who um, uh, uh, does this great program called Art of Freelance, and at Art of Freelance com or dot org is uh, an amazing we're going to link up that we will uh, get that link i'm showing some yeah, links now as really well. good we'll really good uh, resources that you wouldn't have thought of including <laughs> like yeah. you know low interest small biz business administration loans from the government to, you know to just sort of like get a little bit of cash uh to to kind of make sure your business uh stays afloat and also that your vendors and uh and crew get paid so i think that's one of the biggest challenges that I see in, in my world, especially in editorial, is um, you know the crew needs to be paid before the photographer might get his or her pay. So um, I think just thinking about these things out loud with with fellow photographers and fellow crew um, can really help uh, feel like uh, we'll all figure it out. Yeah. And and actually, if I could <laughs> piggyback on that, if you are in a position that you have crew that you can't pay for whatever reason in this situation, if you, if there's any way at all, absolutely. But if not, tell them now and tell them what you're doing because the worst thing is to be sitting there expecting a check to come in because rent is due and for it not to come in and to not know why. Yeah. Yeah, very, very good point. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna move on to the, uh, another question that we got uh, uh, and I think this one is sort of uh, really important to uh, how we're using our time. The question is the last few days have been very suffocating. What are you doing to maintain your creativity? Are you shooting? Are you learning? Um, what kind of suggestions are, are, what are you doing in your own personal lives? Uh, I have a master class sub subscription. So I've been watching that. There's a new one on advertising. I mean, we'll see how much of that changes with what's happening. There's a lot of great stuff on there. Um, However, I will say, if I didn't already have that subscription, I am not doing, I'm not spending money on anything I don't have to. Um, but there's a ton of stuff on YouTube. There's a lot of great stuff on YouTube. There's a lot of garbage on YouTube too. So be careful. Um, there's a lot of information you can read. There's a lot of good websites. Learning so that when you come out of this, you're just a little bit better of a photographer or videographer is something we don't always feel like we have the time to do. And that time is available now. Yeah. Uh, and, and for you, Joe? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the challenges that I've always um, sort of half complained about, but um, wasn't really uh, wasn't really that bad of a problem was not having enough time because of my shoot schedule to really dig into edits. So like my workflow would be shoot the job, make my initial edit uh, client you know, makes finals off of those and then the job goes into the deep dark archives never to be seen again. And I've literally forgot about entire setups of shoots that I've done. I mean, it's, it, you know, if I look into a shoot from two, three years ago, there'll be two or three things that didn't run that I hadn't seen since the day I edited it and never went back and really did a deep dive. So I think getting into your own work and finding some gems and, you know, even critiquing your own work that way of just kind of like looking through a shoot from start to finish and you, you'll remember what your objectives were that day and what the client was looking for and why you made those decisions and you know you could have your own sort of like your own you know deep critique of your work um that can inform your future work and it's something that we don't really ever take time i i don't personally i think there are photographers who are very good at that um but i'm actively trying to dig into you know why did why was that the picture that made it in the portfolio and not these others and tastes change and sometimes you have work that is more pertinent to your current work that is already shot and you can really freshen up an entire um, uh, portfolio or website just based on your own archive much less having to shoot new stuff so i think you know keep in mind you're a photographer you've created a lot a lot of work and content and you might have um forgotten about a lot of it just by the nature of our, our editing process. Yeah, I mean, I certainly, uh, yeah, go ahead, okay. Tony. Oh, one thing with that, I think that Joe had a lot of good things to say right there. Um, but one in particular is if you go through your archives, you might have work, maybe you photograph somebody 
that someone was going to shoot for something next week and now they're desperate for a picture yeah. of that person. Uh, or, those requests are already coming in from syndication agencies saying, you know, they need content. Uh, somebody's still promoting some movie. Uh, you shot that person two, three years ago. There's not going to be another shoot for the, the time being and they still need to do a July, August, September issue. So yeah, there is um, there is content we're all sitting on that if you're not already, you know, with a syndication or stock agency, you might want to be your own sort of agency and start getting it out there in front of people's eyes. And it's rare that we, you know, we have to look at, you know, uh, the silver lining on this, and, you know, and this is quite an opportunity. Rarely do we get that wonderful, uh, you know, thing of time to do all the you know projects and that we've been putting off and stuff like that i mean there's you can work on your portfolio or your website i'm sure there's gonna you know everybody's website's gonna look brand spanking new in a couple of weeks um you can really work on education and i, I think it, right now what i'm benefiting the most is really just reaching out like you you said uh, joe you know uh to either brands that i have worked with or brands that i haven't worked with saying hey i'm here we're supporting each other what can we do to help each other out and i'm actually getting some projects that way and, and communicating just by reaching out and saying hey you know what and it, it, maybe we're not uh, you know this is some for something down in the future but we're lining it up so i think it's really important to you know make those con connections and talk to people right now um and i uh, it's uh, these are you know, all important things that you have to stay motivated. You have to stay, you know, positive in this because, you know, what's the what's the, the alternative stress out and just, you know, kind of, you know, crawl in a corner. That's not going to help you. And it's, you know, and if you feel like that, reach out for help. I mean, that's the most important thing you do. We have a ton of resources on a APA um, that we're going to put up. Uh, I'll share some of them here, but we will we will share the links with you. Um, and, uh, you know, having that uh, that that feeling of a community that's going to support you in times like this is really, really important. And so know that you're not alone. And whether it's APA or ASMP, there's a lot of organizations out there. Um, we certainly uh, are trying our best to program as many things as possible and stay, uh, you know, out there to help you and support you. Uh, I started Open Talks to, to kind of really kind of educate and uh, bring a guest to kind of talk about things and uh, moments and uh, professional stuff in the industry. I also have uh, what's called group therapy on Sundays, which is more of the lighter side where we can just kind of group vent and kind of talk. And that's uh, seven o'clock on Sunday. So that's where you just kind of come and share your stories, your anxieties, fears, something funny, or just vent about why people are hoarding toilet paper and how that's just driving you crazy. Um, what are you guys doing to kind of just entertain yourself on the downtime? What, what is the most important thing for you to really kind of just detox from all of this? Uh, there's a lot of stuff on streaming and I have a couple, maybe 150 Blu-ray <laughs> and DVDs <laughs> um, and old video games. I've been playing Dune 2, which is a video game from the mid 90s. I hear Doom, the new Doom is going to come out. Not, the not Doom, Dune. Oh, Dune. Okay. Like, you know, yep, yep. Her, you know, Frank Herbert. Yes, yes. The worms and uh, it's very low tech by today's standards, but. Well, I, I think we're going to start opening this up to some questions from you guys, because I know that uh, you're all here to kind of uh, all have personal questions that are kind of guide us into the next thing. Uh, Jessica, have you seen any good questions so far? Should I start looking through this? Yeah, um, I have them all written here. Um, our first question on Zoom is from Dana Goldstein. Mm -hmm. um, she said, now that ads or ad shoots are being postponed, what happens to editorial? Um, they still have magazines to put out. Will everything be stock and illustrations for a few months? We kind of discussed that, but um, yeah, yeah, Joe, you certainly brought up a good point on that. Do you want to add anything to it, or um, no? It's a great question. I think it's just uncharted, uncharted territory. Um, magazines were already having issues. I mean, I just shot a cover for a magazine that basically the day before the the cover shoot um, laid off its entire creative team to fold it into another part of the company. That you know, it's just a long story of basically all of the. Creatives at this magazine, um, you know, were no longer putting out this magazine, and that was had nothing to do with this, you know, pandemic. So, um, yeah, magazines are already uh, sort of reinventing what they are as content creators, um, and having content um, uh, not available to them in the in the form of photography is going to be really difficult. So I think they're going to lean for the short term, they would lean on stock. 
Um, they would lean on, um, there's also the world of sort of publicity uh, photo shoots that studios do for, for movies that um, most magazines would rather shoot their own and not use that. And now I think that they'll probably be looking at stuff like that. And illustrations for sure, um, whether that's, you know, from, from a photo or, or, or wholly, you know, created from, from, with an illustrator um, will have to sort of be um, brought up, but they do have to put out magazines. I think they're going to, I think there will be a reality where some magazines might have to skip a month or a summer month or, or, or go down to six issues a year. I mean, it's all the things that they're, they're faced with um, uh, anyway, but I have seen, you know, my deadlines for work I already shot are going forward. They're publishing, they're going to, um, to, to uh, still put out content. But if, if, you know, in three months, like the lead time is usually two, three months before a magazine that you start creating the content. If there are no shoots with those three months, we'll start to see, you know, what, what the solutions are. And um, I think we're going to just all have to be very inventive. I've already heard talk about um, crew sizes having to come down. I mean, here in, you know, in some of these key art uh, campaigns that have tons of art directors uh, and tons of crew and set designers and, and a huge kind of production, we might have to start thinking about in the near future coming back to work, but in a sort of safe manner. It's not like the switch is going to be flicked, you know, uh, back on to, to the way we worked before. So I think it will be a lot of inventive practice of, okay, we can do this with a 10 person crew. Um, the, the, the art department can be all, you know, on a video conference seeing uh, results from the shoot. And, and that might be the new normal for, for a little while um, to to reinvent some of these models that we've we've uh, we've had. Yeah, uh, that kind of leads us perfectly into another uh, online question that we had, um, and it's actually from one of our uh, board members uh, at APA in New York. Uh, um, is it okay to do small shoots with consenting adults who are all self isolating? The vibe on New York Image Makers is that there's a tantamount to committing a crime. Uh, but is it more nuanced? Uh, if we can postpone shoots, when should we start allowing them? This is around for months and we can't afford not to all work. What measures can we take to safely work and be responsible to the herd at the same time? Um, are you guys uh, uh, up on this at all? Are you having the same just, issues? Just come up? starting this conversation, yeah. We've, I've just been speaking to my agents about, um, you know, basically at least telling your clients that we're thinking about it. We don't have answers, obviously, but it's like, you know, the, there are contracts already, you know, for, for companies to advertise in certain outlets and the content has not been created yet. So they're all sort of going to scram, be scrambling until the end of the year to make good on some of these things. I don't think they're all going to just go away magically. So um, I think being a partner, a creative partner with your clients, as Tony was saying before, like, what can I do to help you? Part of that is to say, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about this. One of the challenges and seeing what the challenges, real life challenges are. One of the challenges are we might not be able to gather in groups of, you know, 25 or more, whatever. I mean, this is all just so, so bizarrely new to us. But let's say that that's what our challenge is. Then say, we're thinking about these challenges and here are some solutions. We can remotely have the art directors, you know, we could have you know, hair makeup team offsite. I mean, it's just whatever. We can just say, let's hash it out, and figure out a way forward so that your content can be created in a responsible way that feels like we're not adding to the problem. I mean, it to me, it looks like everything, basically, at least in New York, everything is stopped until the end of March. That's what it feels like. Um, and then I agree, you it can't go on like this forever, whether or not, all the problems are solved and obviously they're not all going to be solved in three weeks or two weeks but it can't go on like this forever so there people we will have to find solutions yeah. um to answer to get back to that question i don't know what the answer is i i wouldn't be doing a shoot this week or next week after that well i say i wouldn't but you never know i mean anything's possible um I've certainly but, found this link, coronavirus on set and production. So this link will have some of those answers that people are looking for in terms of protecting yourself and all uh, certain uh, legal guidelines and stuff like that uh, that have sort of been set up yet. So this is one place to sort of look to get some of your answers. And this is another link that we will be sharing. Uh, that That is a good point. 
that I just saw something pop up. You do want to be sure uh, that you don't want to be liable if you have it, if you're a non-symptomatic carrier, um, which is why it's good to be staying inside as much as possible now. Um, I do want to say one thing um, as well. It's okay. We're, we're being positive and I think it's important to be positive, but it is okay. It's scary. It's upsetting. We're all anxious. Um, if you need to take a day and just have a day where you mope and you sit on the couch and you eat rainbow sherbet and watch Seinfeld reruns, that's okay too. It doesn't have to be, I don't think two weeks of that is no. a good thing, but if sometimes if you just needed a day to check out and not be productive, that's fine. Um, I just saw on social media, which I'm very careful of, uh, filtering what I read and, you know, you can mute people on Facebook for 30 days if they're posting stuff you don't want to see right now. Right. Uh, but Josh Gad, the actor Josh Gad is reading a children's book every night on Twitter. He's holding the book up to the camera or to the phone and reading it in different voices. There are people doing really cool stuff. Yeah. Um, and if you just need, and he did one uh, as well, that's like, you know, it's okay to cry. If you're upset, it's okay to be upset. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And we've certainly seen like, uh, you know, musicians like John Legend and Coldplay go on and do sort of free, uh, you know, singing online. Uh, there's lots of places to go to explore. There's um, amazing uh, museums that have full virtual tours online. So you can go to the museum while you're at home or something like that. Um, there's, I've seen what is so kind of beautiful about this that's kind of pouring out of this is these, everybody's kind of donating their time and kind of grouping together. Um, one person in New York, uh, uh, Sherry Littlefield, is uh, put together a bunch of professional photographers uh, to um, uh, be a mentor in terms of looking at someone's portfolio and their artist statement. And we've all kind of taken, uh, you know, two people each, and uh, we're going to, you know, do a little portfolio review and, and, and a live little Zoom thing so we can sit down. I've seen other people give free education classes. I, I, people just doing nightly activity, you know, in terms of whether it's just a, a happy hour socially online or something more, you know, uh, just talking about uh, different things in, and workshops. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great time to really kind of get involved with people. And I think it's, you know, even though it's kind of a hard time, it's really a beautiful time. And, and a lot of this is, is growing in ways and, and we're supporting each other that never would have happened unless this happened. So I think there's a lot of good that it's going to come out of this. It's, a, it's also a good time to, uh, you have a captive audience if you want to reach out to people that inspire you and, yes. um, and you know, message them with your questions. I mean, I love, yeah. I love, I do that to people that inspire me and I get some questions back sometimes uh, to me and my um, Instagram, you know, messages or whatever, where it's like, you people are home. I mean, all the, all the photographers aren't doing their jet set life right now. Um, yeah. And, they, they and also anyone who teaches knows, you know, the teacher gets as much, if not more out of it than the student sometimes. I mean, we, you know, we present ourselves as, you know, we will share your experience, but it's actually, I, I get so much knowing other people's experience that it's just an exchange of ideas. So I love, I love when people reach out. I love when people say, would you take a look at my project? Um, you know, can I get some thoughts on uh, on this work I'm doing or, or whatever? I mean, we absolutely love that. You would be surprised. You can probably reach out to any photographer that you've always admired and get a response. I would hope um, yeah. get a response right now because um, we're sort of craving that interaction. Yeah. And remember, again, uh, you know, as, as many people that are putting lists together, we're uh, at APA are also putting resources online. So you can go to apanational.org and see we have the Open Talks uh, 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 online resources page there now. And we're also just started something new called Photographer to Photographer, where we're looking for, uh, you know, uh, really kind of finding other people's blogs and inspiration and what other people are finding right now and putting up those links to so we can uh, you know be inspired by other people as well. So if you have those, please, please let us know. And we'd love to, to share that. Also, um, in the, sorry. In in the, in the comments here, um, Deborah Gilbert, I don't know if everyone can see that, but she's saying that she's saying a lot of um, great things that seem like they'd be good resources. And she's saying that um, she's putting together a schedule of photo classes online, all on Zoom. Um, that'd be, I would love to see that link. So I don't know if that goes away after we'll, this. We'll uh, share that, Deborah. Deborah is actually it's part of APA New York. Oh, awesome. Great. Yep. So that'll be an APA link. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, do we have another question there, Jessica? Yes, we do. Um, from 
let's see uh from alex gain sorry if i said that wrong oh, yeah. how are you three freelancers thinking about saving for retirement during this time i i i mean i'll just jump in and saying retirement um is something that you know in the best of times you you do that i think right now um the it's sort of like uh, we're trying to plug the hole and make sure the the the, the their daily workflow works and when we get back to um, some normalcy you know you can get back into funding a, a, a SEP IRA or a pension for for yourself through your own you know corporation working with the CPA I think I don't know anyone sort of thinking about retirement at this point um, in terms of funding and anything I think any money would go straight to um, what's going to get us through the next few months I, I tend to agree if you have the money if you have a big enough cushion that you can keep putting money into your retirement now, it's, I'm not a financial advisor um, or a lawyer, <laughs> but it's probably, I I think it's a great time to be putting money into your retirement if you can with the volatility and how low things are, because then you'll get that bounce when it comes back. But as Joe said, if, unless you have a big enough cushion that that's realistic, um, you know, I have automatic funding of my IRA and I stopped it. I turned it off because I don't know what's going to happen. And it's, I'd rather lose out on a little bit of gains and be that much less stressed than continue funding it and then realize, well, that was a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's certainly, uh, uh, I think, uh, Right now, we maintain the daily, and, and uh, you know, and, and what we've put away, we hopefully don't have to dip into uh, and uh, pull that out to you know maintain our day to day. And that's why it's really important to kind of assess your finances and what you can and can't do at this time. Uh, move on to another question. Yeah, so we have another question from Brooke Hammer on YouTube. We kind of touched on this a few times, but not specifically. Um, she was wondering if anyone has been in touch with agency producers, would love to know what plans are being made on the client side, agency side, um, to create creating content specifically for agencies. Uh, I haven't. I, uh, I certainly have been talking to some people in, in content creation, which uh, I have people so you're going to need a lot of content now. So in, in terms of creating content, whether it's tutorials or, or, or you know, content for uh, webinars or, or stuff like that, I've definitely talked to some people. So there's, people need content right now. There's going to be a lot of viewers. <laughs> so there's, you kind of can figure out uh, creating some content right now and to really kind of set yourself apart. Anything for, for you, Joe, on, on that? or? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's just working backwards for what I do. Um, I mean, I'm sure the people that will get back to work first might be, you know, people in still life or uh, very small shoots with not a lot of people. Um, for me, my shoots tend to involve um, uh, a fair amount of people just because I'm photographing people. So um, I may have to wait and see how any content is being created before we dip back into the the, the things that we've yeah. done. I, I think honestly, we're in sort of the very, very beginning stages of the unknown. And I think, you know, over the next week or two, we may hopefully have a little more, you know, idea of what's going to happen. But right now, we just, it's just kind of a hold pattern because we're kind of like, well, we're not this is uncharted territory. And it's, you know, and that's what I think is so frustrating for all of us is it's, it's very hard to make those answers or those decisions. So you really kind of have to kind of find some stuff to really kind of, and it, you know, educate yourself or, you know, all these, well, all these, you know, daily activities to continue what you're doing and, and solidify your brand. So when this does all the end that you come out of the gate running, you know, this is a really good time to really kind of poise yourself. So when, you know, it all ends that you're not the one left behind that you've really kind of poised yourself to, you know, have that. Uh, new it's website. also, I mean, I think for me and the, some of the photographers I've talked to, it's a time to sort of do a big gut check too. I mean, where, where this job is, Difficult at the best of times. Um, it's uh, sort of nonstop. It, it can be, it can feel overwhelming and obsessive, and that's part of the fun of it. That it, it really gives you a rush. But the gut check being that um, you know that the things that you have to offer creatively, um, they might, uh, you might have to adapt the way that they're um, produced or delivered. But you are a creative person who, who's talents will be necessary again. I mean, we're all sort of like in this, in this 
time where it just doesn't feel like why would anyone hire an artist to do anything and we're um, we're going to get through it i mean i think the three of us probably weathered you know the 2008 stock <laughs> market crash when we thought you know why would anyone really care about um spending money on photo shoots again and you know going back all the way to after 9 11 it seemed uh an odd thing to think about uh, why would anyone care about uh, any kind of media and you know it, it's a long run anyway um and you do have to kind of like stretch out your your timeline and your career timeline and um, check back in with what it is you think you have to offer and know that 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 thing um when presented well will be in demand again yeah um next question jessica we have a question from um, Nader asking, we've all heard people say the stock is dead, but is, is it exploring these days as a passive income? If so, do you have any stock houses that you would recommend? Um, Tony? Uh, I, the stock agencies that I liked um, are not doing much anymore. Uh, Microstock, which is very big, I don't think is worth touching at all. Uh, there are there are agencies like Alamy where they'll sign anyone. All you have to do is tell them you want to submit work and they also don't edit. So if you're just looking for somewhere to put stuff, that's a possibility. Um, I think it depends on what it is. So some of the stuff that Joe was talking about or I was talking about earlier Unless it's a good syndication agency, I would just try and put online yourself. Um, but for regular stock, you know, ask your other friends who are doing it. I hardly ever submit anymore. It's just not, it's not worth the time. Um, I certainly see another question here. That's actually a, a good one. I know a, a lot of the stuff that I've seen on webinars now has been about uh, contracts. And this question is what lessons have you learned about how you would structure your contract terms to protect you in this sort of unique scenario, uh, but still be fair to your clients uh, that are also facing uncertainty in the future. Have mm -hmm. you uh, reassessed your contracts in this? Have you uh, kind of looked at them? What, uh, what would you suggest in this? I do okay. think everybody has to give a little in a situation like this. If, if you're, if you have a contract and you're super rigid about enforcing things that couldn't be predicted, people are going to remember that. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you shouldn't get run over by somebody else either. Everybody has to give yeah. a little. I think the, the obviously we all have to be understanding and if you can if you can kind of work it to postpone it instead of cancel it or you know kind of work with people because you know everyone's kind of a little scared right now and everybody doesn't want to just like walk away from everything but if you can work on postponing things and really kind of solidifying that way uh, i think it's important in terms of looking at contracts i think we've never looked at uh, force majeure and uh, all those things closer and cancellations and and what we have in terms of the wording on uh you know uh retainer versus uh, deposit and stuff like that and these are all important things and, and it, words have a lot of gravity and so it's a good time to just rebrief yourself on contracts and maybe kind of revise. Your also, because we work in isolation, um, don't forget that things like contracts that come across your, um, you know, come across your desk when you're a sole proprietor, freelancer without an agent and without a, a, a larger community. This is the time to reach out to APA, this is the time to reach out to other photographers who are represented, reach out to agents, especially now when people have time to answer questions. But um, uh, even in, in, in the busiest of times, um, it takes uh, only a few minutes to get some clarity on some of the terms of a contract if you're not uh, versed in it. And I've seen some, you know, new photographers make some really bad uh, choices of what contracts they've signed just because they were so excited to shoot that they you know didn't take the time to to do their diligence so i think contracts will be changing you know uh, this will be a new reality for us and we'll all probably have to reach out to each other to understand you know what the what the new um normal is yeah uh another question jessica uh yeah so i actually had a question myself um are there any creative projects uh that you guys have seen online that stand out to you for example, one one that I saw actually was 
um, a photographer that did a photo shoot over a webcam and actually made it look kind of uh, interesting still. So just any fun creative things that maybe you guys have seen that that inspired you that are COVID friendly? <laughs> I mean, I think that's, I think there's no shortage. We, we, we all have a platform now to do amazing or, or just work, anything. I, I shot some pictures today. I was driving across town, you know, and the thinking is I can still drive across town. So I did. And um, on my way, I, I stopped at uh, six different friends' houses and I said, I'll be outside. You can come to the door. And I shot a picture of them from literally across the street and sort of yelled, hello at them and then uh, was on my way and it felt good it just you know it's not like uh, those pictures are going to be um, you know anything earth shattering but for me it's it, it feels good to document my life and to document my day and I think the one thing that busy commercial photographers always complain about is not having time for personal work now all we have time for is personal work there's literally no other type of work to be done right now yeah. and um, and the confinements of being um, uh, isolated can, you know, can create some creative possibilities that you may maybe never considered. I know a, a friend of mine photographs her hand and always ha kind of has, and I think this is a great time to do that series on your hand. And you don't have to think about it in like, oh, art directors will love this, or it'll win awards, or it'll be my portfolio. Just do it as a practice, you know. Don't forget how much fun it is to take pictures, and um, and I think that will that will really be good for our, our mental health too. Yeah, I, I've certainly seen a couple different. Uh, you see the the ones that are very uh, introspective and in showing, um, you know, the uh, isolation and how the, the how desolate the streets are now. I have a friend uh, in in uh, Pennsylvania, BP Miller, that uh, has been taking pictures around his his town, and this is one of the pictures. And certainly, you know, the gravity of this, and, and I've seen some pictures, certainly of New York City, of you know just being, you know, kind of bare in Times Square, and uh, you know, shopping, you know, aerial shots of uh, like Costco's with all the shopping carts lined up like cars and look like a design. So I've seen some incredible stuff there. But then you get you know, some really wonderful creative Photoshop people and, and stuff like that that are really kind of doing some fun stuff uh in terms of uh uh, you know, I, I've seen them put toilet paper in the back of, you know, trucks and make it look the toilet paper huge and it, just some funny stuff as well. So it's, you know, at, at least someone has had, you have to have a sense of humor during all of this as well. Uh, so, I, you know, people are getting very creative and fun in this. And I think it's very important to, to push yourself creatively now because you, you have the time to take some shots and do some, try some stuff and, you know, expand your, yourself to things you maybe you didn't try before. Yeah. Um, I'm just seeing a, a question that was asked to me two places. Um, and one is here from um, Ray Sinclair about, can anyone speak to how COVID downtime feels either similar or different to 2008 so and 9 I mean, we, we can both speak to that. Um, one of the things that I think feels very different to me is that it's global. Um, and those were those other two, I mean, 2008 was certainly global as well. And 9-11 of course became global, but it felt like these sort of American problems that rippled out and now you know there's no no sort of place untouched by what we're going through and, and in some ways um travis and i you know have spoken about this in some ways it's um it it there's an upside to a collective uh, uh effort to get through something and i think the collective effort after those uh the downturn of, of 2008 being in the creative world you know the the upside to that was um that we all had to um you know check in and make sure and a lot of people left the business i mean that's what I, what i saw is people just thought it's not it's not worth the uncertainty i'm going to do something that feels a little bit better for their personality type you know you have to you have to um you have to make sure that you're taking all the boxes and how how you want to live you know you're not you're not being forced to to do this this job, you could be very good at all kinds of things, and um, and knowing that this is the thing you want to do most really does help get through um, the challenges of it. Because if, in the end, it's worth it. For me, you know, all all three of those events. Uh hold obviously heavy gravity as a New Yorker because they, they're all New York. You know, I mean, you look yeah. at, you know, 9-11 uh, and even this right now, New York, now New York has taken the, you know, the, the wonderful hot spot of being like number one in, in, in all of this. Uh, they number and, one. Yeah, I know. It's not something you want to be number one right now, but the one thing I absolutely do remember, and I was there, I went down on 9-11 and I was there on search and rescue that day. 
And it was a couple of days after that I was, my mom wanted to see me upstate. And I remember uh, going to Grand Central and picking up a Newsweek and there was a two page uh, picture and it was called the body line. It was a bunch of firemen handing up uh, the body of a dead fireman. And I'm in that line and my hands started trembling and a news person saw me and came over and we interview for this. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And they started asking me a bunch of questions about, uh, you know, being down there and how I felt about it. And I went, honestly, I'll tell you, I, I, I've never felt people come together more in a time of crisis than after 9-11. I was, you know, whether you were on a subway, whether you were, you know, walking down the street, didn't matter what color, creed, race, you know, what you were, everybody looked at you and went, are you okay? And everybody kind of pulled together in a way that was absolutely beautiful. And I think that's what I'm seeing here again, but this is a more global and it's in New York, you know, everybody felt 9-11, but this is hitting the world. So it's, it's, it's the world's 9-11 in terms of feeling like, oh my God, we're all going through this together. And it's not just New York. It's not just LA. It's all of us. And I think uh, we can really pull together and support each other in ways. And, and that's the beauty I find in this is that it's, it doesn't take moments of crisis to pull together, although it kind of reminds us to do it. And that's what's so important right now is that we remind ourselves every day is we're in this together. We can help each other and really kind of make the best of this. I, I agree with all of that. I think to answer the original question, some of what feels different compared to 2008 or even 9-11 is this is the whole world that has been put on pause. Yeah. You know, those other, I mean, 9-11, especially in New York, I agree, it, it brought people together in a way I've never seen. And it's tragic that it took something like that for that to happen. Um, 2008, because it didn't affect everybody equally, like photographers, creatives, it was it was brutal, but it also felt different because you felt like there were things you could do. Sure, work had shrunk, but you could do more self-promotion or you could do more. And this is different because a lot of those things we can't do right now. Right. Um, and it's, so that experience is very different. It's also, it's hard to compare when you're in it to your memory of what it was like. You know, the 2008 crisis went on for a long, long time. This has been going on for two weeks in the United mm -hmm. States. Yeah. So it, it's difficult. To it's, the, it's the uncertainty of how long this is going to last that I think is a, a major effect on us, uh, certainly at the, at the present. And, you know? and, De and Deborah Gilbert uh, also points something out really. Uh, it's hard to remember, but yeah, after 9-11, um, you know, we didn't, we weren't connected the way we're connected now. Even after the 2008 cr crisis, we're not, we weren't as um, uh, easily uh, uh, communicating the way we are now, which is a blessing and a curse. I mean, sometimes it, it, it helps your mental health to just sort of like go about your day and, and have some uh, focus without all the, the chatter. But also, um, you know, if you're feeling really isolated, you know, reach out and reach out to, to people that you might not, um, you might not talk to every day, but you know, uh, friends that you haven't spoken to in a while. Just some some of that um, that type of uh, outreach, I think, feels feels really good sometimes. Yeah. Um, uh, we're getting on the hour mark here, so we're going to take a couple more questions uh, before we wrap this up. Uh, so, Jessica, do we have another one? Uh, one last question that I saw no, we here. Can, we can do a couple. Uh, from. Well, it's just the last question that I saw oh. is Justin <laughs> uh, Bettman asked, how do you think shoots will change going forward um, after this is all over post Corona? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to say now, but it's hard to say. And it's also like not really, I don't know how valuable it is to guess, but, um, but one thing that I have been thinking about is, you know, in previous times, You'd be surprised how much people want to return to the thing they know how to do and the way they know how to do it. Um, yes, it's a chance to reinvent the wheel, but that doesn't always mean the wheel gets reinvented. I feel like you know we could look to a year, eighteen months from now, and say, "Oh wow, you know this shoot." I mean, keep in mind the way you go about an advertising shoot. In many ways, it's all very different, but in many ways, it hasn't changed in 40, 50 years. So I mean, there you know a magazine shoot the same. I mean. Yes, it, it changes over over decades, but you know, inviting somebody to a photo studio to get a picture taken to appear somewhere, um, I can't I can't imagine that just being wholesale done. You know, I, that that's something that sort of 
serves a very um, uh, valid purpose. And I, I, I can imagine it getting back to something that we feel like is at least a, a vestige of what it was. Yeah. I, I think one thing that will change in the short term, what shoots start happening, is everybody's going to be really, really happy to be on that set. Yeah. yeah. Without the high fives. You already see people yeah. stir crazy and stuff like that. And that's why, you know, it's such a wonderful thing to be able to get in these group talks and, and kind of talk amongst each other. I think uh, people are going to be very eager to return. And uh, I don't I don't know how much it's just going to change the interim. <clears throat> Uh, another question? That was all that I saw. If anyone has any other questions, please feel free to drop them. Well, I saw I saw yep. some questions in the live about um, what feels like an appropriate time to begin promotion and outreach. Um, oh, I did not see that. Tony, you mentioned that some marketing just feels a little tone deaf right now because we're all just trying to wrap our heads around this situation and it's a little weird to be marketed to. So I guess that probably speaks to what even photographers do in terms of, uh, of you know, look at my work. In this yeah, I, I think reaching out to people you know that you have a relationship with and saying, hey, I'm just checking in on you. Is there, Yeah. don't sell them, but tell them you're available if they need something and that you're available to help if you can, um, whether or not it's for, you know, photography related or image related, but just let them know that you're thinking of them and you care. I think that's, that's fine. I feel like straight up promotion is challenging. Um, but everybody's going to have to decide that for themselves. You know, I can't, I can't tell anybody what to do. And there will be times when I'm too cautious and somebody else was right and they should have done it. And times when I am perhaps too brazen and I should have been more cautious. It's just. Yeah. And it, it, I think you really kind of assess what type of photographer you are. I mean, certainly if you're, you know, a family portrait or a photographer or something like that, I think it's a good time maybe to uh, go back and pull some of your clients and, and make a little, you know, there's great slideshows you can do and just say, Hey, look, thinking of you during this time, I hope, wishing well for all your family and friends and uh, just send them that, you know, you know, it's a great time to revisit your clients and, and kind of talk to them and touch base. And you don't have to be asking for something, but letting them know you're there and letting them know that you're caring and you really just think. Yeah. And also just because somebody works at an agency doesn't mean they're fearing for their future and their job. I mean, they're, you know, everyone is, everyone is vulnerable. Um, it's no one's totally sitting pretty. Everything is, is up in the air. So you know, on a human level, you know, the person that you think has all the, has all the marbles, you know, is, is also uh, as concerned as, as you are about um, what the future holds. So yeah, I think that empathy of, of, uh, of knowing that your clients, your crew, your vendors, um, everyone who works with you are all concerned and reaching out to them on a human level seems to make more sense than a sort of business level. Yeah. And I, I will say too, this is obviously a sample of one but an art producer I know commented on Facebook how irritating he found it that as these celebrities are diagnosed with uh, coronavirus, then he'll see everybody who's ever shot them post something on Instagram yeah. about them and say, you know, so-and-so was diagnosed. You know, I shot them two years ago for this. He found that to be irritating. Yeah. Um, I don't know if everybody does. And it's also... I don't know what the answer is there because I can also see a lot of, you know, sure, you, you met this person, you want to mention that they were diagnosed and you're thinking of them. I don't think that's necessarily negative, but be aware that for some people, they're not a fan of that right now. Yeah. Um, I guess that kind of brings us to, a, I want to uh, kind of give us a chance to kind of give a closing remark or any final thoughts. Joe, do you have anything you'd like to, you know, kind of give a, a closing note on this? Uh, no, I think, I mean, a lot of the things that I'm seeing in the comments really is, um, can we circle back and do this again in a week or two or three? And, and it's true because, I mean, literally last week uh, was like, it feels like 10 years ago. So I think, <laughs> I, think that, um, I think that this is why we need to dig in and lean into our community. And if you don't feel like you have it, it's a great time to build it. Like I said, people are available. People want to talk about photography. People want to um, talk about work, you know, their own work or, or whatever. People also want to check out and not, you know, maybe people have been going like, 
you know, crazy for a year straight. Maybe they, this is a, a forced downtime to just, you know, get healthy and, and, and feel good again. So there's no, there's no one way through it. There's no great advice anywhere. Everyone has to do their own thing. But I think community is what, um, what is at stake here because we're not going to be, um, we're not going to be seeing people face to face for, for a little bit. Right, right. How about you, Tony? Uh, just one thing. I, I saw one question in the Q&A. Yep. Somebody who was anonymous said that they'd shot a big job and they were concerned about getting paid and wanted to know what resources there might be. Um, first of all, I'm not an attorney. But what I would say is register those images with the Copyright Office so that if they're used and you haven't been paid, it's, hopefully it's copyright infringement depending on the terms of your contract. And if you're worried about it, talk to a lawyer. You know, it's it's going to be a couple hundred bucks. Well, depending on your city, between a hundred and a thousand, <laughs> um, depending on your city, to speak to an attorney and try and get ahead of it and see what they have to say. Yeah. Um, but I'm not an attorney, so so I I can't speak to that. But I can see being stressed about it. Yeah. Any closing remarks you'd like to give to people, Tony? Um, yeah, sure. I think uh, both of you and Joe have said a lot of great things. Um, it's a community. Reach out to people. Let people reach out to you. And just try and keep your chin up. But soon yeah. we'll have a better soon. I don't know what soon means, but I'm choosing to believe that soon is soonish. Um, we'll have a better sense of what things are and how things are going to play out. And then we'll go from there. Yeah, uh, I certainly want to thank our guests for coming on tonight, Joe and Tony. Uh, it's been a, a great pleasure to have you on and kind of just, you know, have an open talk, as they say. Uh, and certainly this will be continuing every week uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, so we do have a place to circle back and have a community to talk. And open talk is more of, you know, a place where I will have guests and kind of have this webinar type of uh, uh template, uh, whereas uh, Sunday nights, I will be doing group therapy, and you get to talk and, and be part on the camera and, and interactive and ask questions and really kind of just vent and and, and have a little lighter side as well, um, which is really important. I think we, we need to have a sense of humor in all this and kind of laugh and cry together and uh, be able to just vent about things. So uh, open nights, uh, I will uh, have uh, links up on, on my Facebook as well as uh, um, uh, APA and, and other places. Uh, so you can find uh, that. But uh, Always look back on uh, apanational.org for anything uh, going on with uh, our links in terms of, you know, everything we found from other photographers, uh, news sources, uh, uh, photographer to photographer. So these are important places to look for, you know, and, and congregate to find uh, sources that we either talked about tonight or will continue to find to give to you. Um, I look forward to continuing this conversation. And please, if you have ideas or, um, or suggested guests or topics that you would like to discuss, uh, you can email me at chairman at APA newyork.com and i'd love your feedback and uh this is an organic you know this is the only the second one we've done and it's birthed you know at right out of uh, all of this and uh to really kind of make a community together and support each other and uh we're stronger together so i appreciate your time and i look forward to uh seeing you all at the next open talk and um with that i would say good night thank you everybody absolute pleasure guys thank you. Thank you. and remember stay positive we will get through this you are not alone I'm going to put that up on the screen just to remind you. Guys, have a wonderful night. Thank you for joining us.